We want to make sure that the hip joint, the acetabulofemoral joint of the hip is, can you see my bent knee? I'm bringing it forward. Okay. It's higher than the tibiofemoral joint of the knee. So oftentimes what happens is when people are sitting in their office chair or driving also, that the knee is below the hip, guaranteed, guaranteed that your hip flexors, particularly the iliopsoas, this muscle rests in front of the quadratus lumborum muscles of the low back. So you've got this sort of band, right? And when people are overly sitting, prolonged sitting, or, or sitting with the knees higher than the hips, all of this area, front and back, tighty, tight, tight. That contributes to this kind of walk that you see with seniors. They walk like this. And part of it is because the hips and the back are just so tight. It's not necessary. So just watch the height of your chair. All right. You can build yourself up with a cushion, your car seat. If it, you know, if it just automatically goes up, my car is old and I have to sit on a pillow. So that's it. I just wanted to talk about those few things and I'm ready to get started. What about you? I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. Let's push this down. You'll let me know what you can see and can't see when I get down there. I'm going to just move one thing because I want to talk about a couple of yoga accessories. <clears throat> we good? Yes, excellent. Great. Okay, so just a, a, another little point to note is the accessories that we're going to be using today for class. It's going to be a yoga bolster. However, not everybody has a yoga bolster, right? So you can use a pillow. Or you can maybe use, if, if, if you're in your office and there's a little sofa, you can pull a cushion from there. This is for people that when I pull forward in the chair, but some people with their back muscles, they must have support. So this way you get to come forward, but you still are fully supported. The other props would be a yoga strap. However, you could use a, a belt or even like the belt of a robe if you want. And then the other is a um, yoga blocks. Now with a yoga block, can you see me okay with this, Nan, uh, um, Amy? Yes, I can. Okay, great. So I'm holding the block at level one. Then there is level two. Then there is level three. Do you have to have a block? No, maybe a big thick book, but with a proper binding so it doesn't slip slide. All right, so here we go. We're sitting into the chair. I am sitting back into the chair. Watch the slouching stuff, right? So the feet are firmly planted on the floor. Now, to fully properly put the posterior pelvis into proper alignment, I'd like you to place your hands underneath your buttock flesh. Pull the flesh not only straight back, but then wick it out wide toward the shoulders. So what this does is pull the flesh apart a little bit so that we can sit up on what's called, in yoga, it's called the six bones. Anatomically, it's referred to as the ischial tuberosity. We want to absolutely get acquainted with the six bones, feet fully grounded into the floor. Now I'm going to bring my feet chair width apart, not wider than the chair. I am going to pull forward a little bit. If you need your bolster, you can put it behind you. And with the hands on the thighs, I'm going to start moving into what's called a seated cat cow. So this is inhaling into spinal extension, broadening across the shoulders, opening the heart, lifting the chin to stretch the anterior muscle muscles of the neck. Now on the exhale, the hands slide forward, hook the fingers over the knees, and now I'm going to come into a seated cat, which is basically a seated abdominal crunch. And then inhaling through the nose as I slide the hands toward the groin, coming into the spinal extension of cow, and then exhale into spinal flexion of cat. Inhaling into cow. The movement is slow. It is not fast, right? You can make it as small or as big as you like, depending upon the, uh, the condition of your back. 
So I'm going to hold now in the cat. Belly button is pulled in, working those abdominal muscles. And then from here, I'm going to slowly roll on up. And because there's lots of wrist issues with office work, I'd like you to bring your hands together almost as if you're making like the classic namaste position in yoga. And then you're going to interlock the fingers. And I'm going to make a sideways number eight. And I'm going to move those wrists. You might feel or hear a little snap, crackle, pop. That's okay. Often that's just the blood, nutrients, oxygen bubbles. Then they're starting to move through the joints and the tissue. Now here's the little thing that I gotta look at myself for the moment to reverse direction. Reversing direction is very important for cognition. Helps to prevent the cognitive impairment by doing something against your habit. And then we're going to release the arms down. I want you to vigorously flap the wrist. We're getting the blood flow down to the nail bed, which is the distal interphalangeal joint. Let's take a couple of big shoulder rolls up, back, and down. This is another very tight area, right, with all the typing, texting, computerizing, driving. We're not doing this. We're lifting the shoulder girdle and rolling. Now, I'm going to sit forward a bit, and I'm going to bring my feet wider than the mat, turning feet out just a little bit, which is an external or a lateral rotation. And my arms are super long, so I'm going to press the legs open, push down into the feet to then lift and lengthen the spine. So this is a seated wide angle. When you sit a lot, the adductor muscles of the inner thighs get overly contracted. And this is just a way to offset it. If your arms are not like mine, you can just use your hands to open. Breath in and out through the nose. Then I'm going to bring the hands on top of the thighs. And I want to take this particular class into all of the movements of the spine. So I'm going to come forward like I am with the spinal extension of cow, but then I'm going to go to the side, then I'm going to come back to cat, to the side, and forward. So this is called a Sufi grind. Now maybe your movement has to be a lot smaller. Totally acceptable. Fast. No, no, no. Now I'm going to reverse direction. So in yoga, we prefer inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the nose. But, you know, if you can't, you can't. But you just want to breathe. I'm going to hold here. Roll up. Now, one of the things Amy and I were discussing before we started the chat is um, the, the overly, the prolonged sitting causes issues down in the low leg. And this is the pooling of the blood that I said at the beginning of the chat. It's the accumulation of the blood down by the ankles and the calves. One of the things to know about the calf muscles is the soleus muscle is, um, it's called the second heart. And part of its job is to basically send the venous return of the blood back to the heart. So we want to do some action for the low legs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift my left heel as I inhale. I'm way up on the ball of the foot. And then exhale, I articulate the foot to press the heel down. And now we're going to go inhale to the right, super high. Exhale to lower. Excellent for the plantar fascia, which underlies the, the connective tissue on the bottom of each foot. We're going to take it to the right. We're going to lift and lower, up and down and up and down. Now we're going to do three times both. Just put in a pumping action and that will offset any accumulation. Hold steady for the moment. And now I'm going to Toe 
heel, the feet closer together, not fully together, but closer together. Sit back into the chair and just take a couple of shoulder rolls. And then one more time, I'm gonna want you to bring those legs out wide because we're gonna do something now where we tie in the back. So I'm gonna take my yoga blocks and I'm gonna bring them to the floor out the front. I'm gonna bring them up to level three, the highest level. So when I press my legs open, I'm extending my torso forward. I'm not collapsing. And I'm gonna bring the hands to the floor or to the block. So it depends upon your flexibility. We're gonna stretch the inner thighs, we're gonna stretch the back muscles. So if you, if you feel flexible enough, you can take it down to level two. You can go to level one. If you have the spinal issues that I previously discussed, then you don't have to come down at all and you can just work on pressing the legs open. Or you can bring your hands down and then round down. We wanna press the knees over the second to third toe. When I drop down like this, Amy, I'm getting the sacroiliac joint. Very tough area to stretch, but this will do it. Now to come out of it, whether it be from blocks or the floor, I bring the hands to the thighs. I have a choice here. I can either roll up or push down into the thighs for leverage to extend the spine to lift and lengthen it. Toe heel, sitting forward. I want to take a counter position. So on my chair, there is a space. There's an opening behind here. So I'm going to slip my hands underneath there. Now, if you don't have that on your chair, you can grab the side of the seat or the chair legs. Totally fine. And I'm going to place the heels of my hands on the chair back, push down into the feet, thrust up the chest. Now, for the moment, I'm going to speak to you, but I would like you to lift your chin up toward the ceiling. So you're going to stretch those anterior muscles of the neck, you're going to open up the pectoralis muscles of the chest, the front deltoid. We're going for scapular retraction, which means the shoulder blades become like kissing cousins. Now I'm going to lift the head. And then inhale. I bring the chin to neutral. Stay here. Folks, what you just did for your thyroid gland is give it a present because now the thyroid gland gets a rush of blood just by that simple movement. Excellent for hypo, hyper, and Hashimoto's. So I'm going to release the chair and sit back. Let's relax the back for the moment. Inhale, open the arms wide. Exhale, we're going to self hug, try to reach the fingers in behind the shoulder blades, and we're going to do what I call rock the baby. So I'm pulling away from the chair backing a little bit so that you can see it's not this. It's not this side to side stuff. It's rotation. We want to rotate the vertebral column to keep it healthy. So what are the movements of the vertebral column of the spine? We have Flexion, extension, lateral flexion, and rotation. This class will take you through all those movements. Then I'm going to open back out, inhale. And of course, we have to do both sides in yoga. We have to be balanced. So opposite arm crosses on top. Hug yourself. Hug the baby and do the vertebral column rotation. Breath in and out through the nose and back to center. Release the arms, maybe a couple of shoulder rolls again would be nice. All right, so now I'm gonna to talk to people first who are hypertensive, if you're medicated or not, all right? Because um, I'm gonna ask you to lift your leg. So I'm lifting my left, you're seeing it as what, Amy, the right? It's on my right side. Okay. All right. Just want to make <laughs> All right. So 
when if you're hypertensive i'm going to suggest that you hold one hand palm up place the other hand on top of it palm up and that's how you lift the leg um if your arms can't support your leg well then then you're going to grab your yoga strap don't worry about lifting it high so you have your strap to easily lift the leg for those of us who don't need either then interlock the fingers behind the thigh and we're going to lift now here's the, the one thing to call to your attention in yoga it's oppositional movement at all times so one foot is pushing down opposite lifts up so i'm going to point and flex so technically it's called plantar flexion when we point dorsiflexion when we flex point and flex that ankle folks the, the flexibility of the ankle is of the utmost importance for your balance extremely important now i'm going to make circles in one direction you might feel here snap crackle pop again it's the same situation not necessarily arthritis we're going to reverse direction men are super tight in their ankles i mean men do all kinds of things when they ask them to, to just rotate the ankle so let's see if we can focus on that now we want to warm up the tibiofemoral joint of the knee so i'm doing a gentle knee swing forward and back what i am not doing is kicking i'm not doing that this is a gentle knee swing lubricate the joint now we're going to travel up to the acetabulofemoral joint of the hip so i'm going to make hip circles and my toe is going to touch the floor but it doesn't have to maybe you need to make it super small that's okay what's not okay fast now we're going to reverse direction one more time great hold here now from here i'm going to place the ankle across the opposite thigh on the opposite leg i'm looking at ankle to knee to hip alignment now before we go any further we must make a disclaimer here if you have osteoporosis you don't do this so here's your modification you take a block put it to the inside of the non-working leg so to speak you take the side of the foot place it on the block so because what i'm just looking to do is open up the hip joint with this in a lateral rotation and this does it but it does it in a safe manner for osteoporosis even if your practitioner says it's cool be careful with this particular movement now i'm going to take both hands place them on the thigh flesh you never want to push down on your inner kneecap the patella because it's not officially attached to anything it's kind of floating so you don't push on the inner knee you can now align it we want to push down on the flesh so i'm pushing down on the foot that's on the floor and i'm pushing so that i can lift my spine higher shoulders are down so we're targeting the lateral rotators by the gluteals and in particular the piriformis muscle which is the largest of those lateral rotators and the sciatic nerve runs under or through that piriformis muscle and um, this is a wonderful stretch for it but maybe we can go deeper into it when you sit a lot this really gets tight so i'm going to put my forearms on my shin bone i turn my elbow onto the fleshy part of the thigh my hands are not holding on to anything i'm pushing down in the foot that's on the floor to lift the chest this foot is dorsiflexed or flexed all right so really feeling it i even feel spinal adjustment going on in my lower back belly button is drawn in when you pull your belly button in you're engaging the deepest of your core muscles the transverse abdominis. It's a good little hack on how to train your abs. Now, if you want to go deeper and you feel like, hey, I feel pretty good, then you can go over the front and take it down to the floor. But maybe you can't reach the floor, so that's when you use your blocks. 
So the idea with the blocks is you're simply lifting the floor up to you. This is the seated version of pigeon capo toss. And I think it's also called the number four stretch. To come up, hands to the shin. Inhale, I'm either going to roll or pull the torso up. Exhale. Now, whenever I come all the way up, that's when I want to take an inhale so we can prevent orthostatic hypotension, which is a rapid plunge of the blood pressure. I'm going to dance the foot to the middle of the mat, and then I'm just going to simply cross my legs as if I'm sitting at a table having a little chat with you, right? And I'm going to actually hook my ankle behind the opposite ankle. So we've got them wrapped around each other. Now my top thigh is, I'm gonna call it as the right thigh. And inhale, I'm gonna open the arms. Exhale, I'm gonna crisscross left arm on top. Now, disclaimer, if you have rotator cuff muscle issues or any kind of impingement or nerve compression at the neck, you put your hands on your shoulders like this. Otherwise, we're going to come into Gardendasana, which is eagle pose, where what we're looking for is the back of the hands to touch each other. If they don't, you use your yoga strap between your hands like so, and it's all right if they don't touch. Now, maybe they touch readily, and if they do, then you wrap your wrists. I'm going to bring the elbows a bit higher than my, my chin. And this is going to give me a nice stretch through the scapulae between those shoulder blades. Inhale, I'm going to lift them higher, and I'm going to look up at the ceiling. Exhale, I'm going to round the spine and bring the elbows either toward the sternum at the breastbone or all the way down toward the belly button for an abdominal crunch. Inhale, I'm going to take it up. And exhale into the flexion of the crunch. Inhale, we lift. One more. Exhale into abdominal crunch. We're going to hold here now. Pull the belly button in. And then inhale, we lift up, up, up. Exhale, we're going to untangle ourselves and uncross the legs. And I would actually come into a couple of shoulder roll first because that's a lot of work on a shoulder girdle, but it's appropriate work given that we're doing this for an office setting. And I'm actually even going to ask you before we take it to the other side, let's do some seated cat-cow. So I pulled forward. If you need your bolster, please use it. Feet a little bit wider. Inhaling into spinal extension. Exhale, spinal extension. Flexion. Inhale into the baby back bend of cow. Exhaling into the abdominal crunch of the cat. Inhale and then exhale. Hold for the moment. Rolling up. And we get to do that whole sequence now to the other side. So remember, those of you hypertensive, palms, those of you who can hold the leg up, strap. The rest of us, we're going to interlock underneath your opposite thigh, your left thigh. So I'm pushing down in the right to help lift the left. Now, a lot of times I see people do this stuff or this stuff or that. No, no, come on. Get yourself lifted. Lower the leg if need be. That's all right. Hold steady. I'm looking at right ankle to right knee to right hip joint. Point and flex. So plantar flex. Dorsiflex, plantar flex, dorsiflex at ankle. I'm going to be good for that calf here as well. And then we're going to circle it. Now, this one does not like it as much on this side. I'm not going to quit, though, because of that. I'm just going to do my best to try. I don't like quitting. And then reverse direction. Belly button drawn in to protect your back. Lovely. Let's go to the gentle knee swing. No kicking. We're not punting a football. The gentle knee swing. And let me get that puppy out of the way. And I'm going to make circles for the acetabulofemoral joint. 
Don't need to touch the floor. That's okay if you don't. Reverse direction. You can keep it small, but not fast, all right? And then we bring it in. I'm going to dance the foot to the middle of the mat. And here we go, ankle across the thigh. So I'm telling you now, this side's my tighter side. It, it happens to the best of us. So those of you who remember with osteoporosis, put the block down on the floor. I'm going to take both hands, press down onto the thigh flesh. Foot is dorsiflexed. Shoulders are down. This side is dying to do this with me because it's tighter. And so what do I do? I push down harder in the right foot. I don't put push harder on the joint. So we're in variations of kapotasana, seated style of pigeon. If we want to go deeper, here we go. Elbow to thigh, forearms to shin, hands holding on to nothing. And I'm pushing down on the left to lift the torso up. I want this collapsed stuff. We get to do that if we go deeper than at the end, we can let it go. Hold here, breath in and out. Go after those lateral rotators. Send them some love. And then if you wish, now one side will take this nicely from me. The other side, I don't know. I'm not going to know until I try. And that's the thing about yoga. Have patience in yoga. It's not linear. One day you may feel great in your yoga practice. The next day you may go, whose body is this? That's okay. Keep doing it. So remember, we could also use the blocks if need be. Ooh, la, la, hello, tush. It's right in there. Now to come up, you can bring hands to shin. Remember, you get to either roll up or lengthen all the way up. Hold steady a moment. Moving the foot back to center, crossing the knees. Now, maybe that's as close as you go. That's okay. Or you can double wrap the ankles then. So my top thigh is my left thigh. I'm going to open the arms out. Inhale. Exhale. Remember, rotator cuff uh, and neck issues to the shoulders. Otherwise, top arm is right. And we can bring either the back of the arms together or use your strap. Or ultimately to crisscross the wrist. These are arms of the eagle. That's what I like to call it. Garudasana. So the bottom elbow lifts the top. That's the big stretch between the scapulae. I mean, I feel it all the way down to the mid-back of this. Now, inhale, we're going to lift up higher. Look up at the ceiling. Exhale, I'm going to bring the elbows toward either the sternum or that belly button for the crunch. Inhale, we lift up, up, up. Exhaling, abdominal crunch. Inhale, we lift. Ooh la la, feel it in those shoulders. Exhale, down to the belly button. Please hold. Breath in and out through the nose, belly button drawn in. And now from here, we're going to untangle those arms to come up, unwrap the legs, uncross. There you go. I'm going to sit up a bit. I'm going to take those shoulder rolls. And I think I like a little more cat-cow for these folks here. Feet no wider than the chair. Palms, here we come. Spinal extension for cow. Exhaling through the nose, spinal flexion. Inhale, exhale. I like to do it in group of threes, one more of each. Inhale and exhale, hold. Let's slowly roll on up. We're going to sit back into the chair. Now, here comes the lateral flexion I discussed earlier. So you're going to take your right hand to the outside of that outer right leg of the chair, left hand to your waist. You're going to push down into both feet. Now inhale, exhale. As I start to slide down, I turn my sternum, you hear that, the breastbone, toward the ceiling. We don't want to collapse the side organs. We want to keep them open. So we do that by that slight rotation. Inhale, 
Exhale, you can arc the arm up and over. If you have the shoulder issue, you can keep your hand to the waist. It's beautiful posture to open up those intercostal muscles between the ribs, the obliques at the waist. The intercostal muscles are responsible for 25% of your respiration cycle. They assist the diaphragm and lungs. Inhale, I'm going to turn that palm up, grab a hook. Exhale, I push down into that left foot, reach out, stretch out the left fingers to come to center. Now, before I do the other side, I want you to sit a little forward on the chair. You're going to take your yoga block, level three, and that's going to go between your knees. We want to make sure that the inside of your ankles are as wide apart as that the block. So we're strengthening the hip adductors now. I'm going to sit back just a little bit as I press. So this hand is going to go to the outside of the right thigh. I think it was this side. And I'm going to bring the opposite arm up. Inhale, exhale, roll it back. Now, you know, with my long arms, I'm holding the chair. But if you can't, I'm, what I, I should say, I'm holding the seat behind me. But you can grab the side. It's okay. Inhale, push down into both feet. Exhale, turn and twist. Roll your right shoulder back. For Arha Matsyandrasana, half spinal twist, half fish pose. Belly button drawn in. Excellent for peristalsis and for your large and small intestines. Let's give your neck a little TLC. So inhale, turn the head, look over the left shoulder. Exhale, turn the head, look over the right. Inhale, look over the left. Exhale, look over the right. Inhale, look over the left. Exhale, look over the right. Inhale, head center. Exhale, torso and arm back to center. Lower the block down. We sit back. Let's go to the other side now. So left hand to the outer left leg of the chair, right hand to the waist. Inhale as I slide down. Exhale, I turn the sternum toward the ceiling. So this whole side, the, the left side organs, we keep them open. Inhale, exhale. If you want to arc the arm, you don't have to because you'll still stretch the intercostal muscles and the obliques the other way as well with the hand to the waist. And inhale, we're going to turn that palm toward the ceiling. Exhale, reach up by pressing into the right foot, releasing the right fingers, and then grab the block between the thighs. Hand to the outside of the left thigh. Inhale, left arm up. Exhale, behind you. Inhale, I push down into both feet, drop shoulders down, lift and lengthen spine. Exhale, twist. Now, we're not overly pulling. We're not cranking it out from the arms. We're drawing the belly button in and exhaling in order to take the twist. So inhale, I'm going to turn and look over the right shoulder. Exhale, turn and look over the left. Inhale, looking over the right. Exhale, looking over the left. Inhale, look over the right. Exhale, look over the left. Inhale, head center. Exhale, torso, arm back to center. Set the block down for a moment. Just take a couple of breaths. And one more pose before we close out. Going to bring the blocks out in front. I'm actually going to place the blocks level one next to each other. And I'm going to want your heels on the blocks. I'm sitting a little bit forward so you can use your bolster behind you. And both legs out in front. I'm going to take my yoga strap now and I'm going to bring it around the balls of the feet, not the arches. From here, I'm stretching those toes wide apart, trying to expand them out, push out through the heels. Now, a lot of people, when they do this, they're like this. No. So what you do is relax shoulders, start to slide the hands back a little bit, going toward you. 
Now my elbows are bent and I get to utilize my bicep muscles because the elbows are bent. Inhale, exhale, I come into a gentle forward flexion, going for Paschimottanasana, seated forward bend. Those of you who are super flexible, be careful. We don't want your chair to tip because they can. So be careful how far you go here. Those of you very, very flexible, you can take your peace fingers, wrap them around the big toes for Kyogi Toa. Inhale, exhale, you can go deeper. Maybe yes, maybe no. Big stretch, the plantar fascia underlying the feet, the Achilles tendon, the calf, hamstrings, glutes, low back. I mean, I tell people you're going to feel it where you feel it. Because of those areas, any areas tight, it's going to feel. And then if you want to use your strap, inhale, you can actually pull yourself forward and up. Exhale. And now I'm going to release the strap. And we can set ourselves up for a final relaxation. I'm going to bring the blocks a little closer. You can even stack your blocks higher if you want for this. The heels come on the blocks. The legs are straight but I would like you to enjoy sitting back into your chair. And if you have a little blanket or something, you can throw it over you. You know, South Florida, I don't need that. And palms up, just close the eyes and relax. Take a few moments to allow the yoga practice to settle into the body. Just taking a few moments to find gratitude and appreciation for good health, grateful for our bodies, for working so hard for us, and perhaps sending someone in need love and light. And bringing the palms together in front of the heart as if performing a prayer in Namaste. You don't have to bring your hands here. And in yoga, we like to honor each other by saying the light and spirit within me honors the light and spirit within you. This translates into the word namaste. Thank you so much. Namaste. Hey, lady. Namaste, my love. Thank you for having me on. Well, until I see you guys again, remember, be strong, be well, and be green. green. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thank you, Amy. Now you can listen to Be Green with Amy expert interviews wherever you go. Listen while walking, meal prepping, or traveling. Find Be Green with Amy on Apple, Google, Alexa, Amazon, or virtually anywhere you find podcasts. Be strong, be well, and be green with Be Green with Amy.